This is, this is Wolf Bishop with Pressable, and he's going to talk about the five most essential steps to WordPress security. Thank you, guys. I hope everybody enjoying WordCamp Atlanta 2018. All right, so first of all, just real briefly a little bit about myself. I've got 13 years of WordPress experience. been working with WordPress since 2005. Um, I am a WordPress educator. I absolutely love teaching about WordPress. It's, it's kind of my biggest passion when it comes to WordPress is teaching, um, imparting the wisdom, because I think this is the best platform in the entire world for building a website. So I, as I mentioned before, I do work for Pressable. We are a managed WordPress web host. Uh, and I am an avid outdoorsman. I love spending time outside on my four-wheeler or, or hunting with my air rifle or my crossbow. Um, I live on 19 acres of off-grid homestead in the Ozarks, so it's, it's really awesome. And I've got, six, my backyard is 63,000 acres of, nas of national forest. So um, I'm also an avid bicyclist. I bicycle 10 miles every single day. Um, I'm a husband and father to an amazing wife and three equally amazing children. All right, so first thing I want to do is say this. If you never do anything else to secure your site, do these things. These are those things that are the most important. They're going to give you the bare minimum of security that you need. Obviously, there's a lot more you should be doing than what I'm going to talk about today. But these are the ones that are the absolute essentials. Without these things, I can almost guarantee you at some point you will be hacked. All right, so I'd like to put on a little fact. Um, People have a habit of blaming their host when they get hacked. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I get, I see a ticket or a chat come in and somebody's irate at the host because their site got hacked. And then you find out that they're using passwords like admin or password one, two, three. And they, and, and, or every user on their site is an admin and they can't figure out, well, why am I getting hacked? Um, so something to keep in mind is that the vast majority of compromises, well over 95% of compromises, are a direct result of improper deployment, configuration, or management. Uh, this is kind of borne out by the 2018 Security Hacked Website Report, which just came out last week. Um, in mo and they said, and this is a direct quote from there, in most instances, the compromises which are analyzed had little, if anything, to do with the core of the CMS application itself, more with its proper deployment, configuration, and overall maintenance by the webmasters. In other words, people are not taking proper care of their site. They're not making sure that it, they have strong passwords. They're not making sure that they do these five things we're going to talk about today. So let's get into it and go with number one. And I consider this to be the most important because if you have this one covered, then no matter what else happens to your site, you can recover it. 80% um, of all websites have little to no backups or very inadequate backups. What do I mean by inadequate? Well, one of the biggest things is keeping your backups on the same server as your website. The logic of this is simple. Somebody gains access to your server, where your backups are stored, where your site files are stored. They're not only going to screw up your website, they're going to delete, your, delete or screw up your backups. And then, how are you going to restore your site? So it is extremely essential to keep your, ser your backups remote or off your server. Uh, there are really great plugins that will make this very, very easy. Um, things like uh, Updraft Plus, Backup Buddy, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they allow you to back your site up to a myriad of different platforms uh, from Amazon S3 to Dropbox to Google, One, Google Drive, whatever. Um, just about every platform out there is supported in one way or another from one plugin or another. So. Uh, you can definitely have a lot of options. Uh, some are better than others, so definitely do your research on them. Um, so backup plugins are important in that sense. Uh, it is also important to take a manual backup on occasion. Um, this is not, if you have a good backup plugin, this is not something you necessarily have to do on a regular basis. The cool thing about doing a manual backup is what a lot of people don't realize is you don't necessarily have to back up everything. Okay? You have to back up basically two things, your database and your WP content folder. Because if you have those two things, you can always restore your website. Host backups. Um, most good hosts provide backups. Most good hosts will also tell you flat out not to rely on those backups. Uh, you got to keep in mind that hosts are backing up thousands upon thousands upon thousands of sites every single day. Uh, so inevitably, some of those backups may not be viable. Some of those backups may have a mistake in it something may happen that those backups are not effective. Uh, so 
while it is great to have those as an absolute last resort, don't count on them, don't rely on them, but also do make sure that your host does provide them. All right, second one. So I mentioned bad passwords like admin and password123. You would be surprised how many times in this industry I see this. And here's a few examples of good passwords. Uh, we're going to get into more detail here of what makes up a good password. Uh, but the one of the top three causes of a compromise on a website is a weak password. Uh, we'll get into the other ones as well, but one of the top three is a weak password. Um, so make sure you have a nice secure password. And here's how to do that. So these are what I consider the absolute bare minimums for a password. If you can do better than this, great. Uh, but these are the bare minimums that every single password you use. And don't just use do this on your website. Do this on every online account that you have, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Uh, always, these are general guidelines that fit everywhere. Okay? So you should have a minimum of 12 characters. 16 is even better. Uh, your password should be made up of a nice combination of upper and lowercase letters, symbols, and numbers. It should be randomly generated with no dictionary words and no personal identifiable words. So don't use your pet's name or your dog's or your kid's name or your anniversary or anything of that sort. Anything that can be tied directly to you. Uh, because a hacker uh, can be, may very well be somebody that you know. And if they know you well enough, or if they can find enough information on you online, they can figure out your password fairly easily. Uh, granted, that is not the standard way that most passwords get discovered, but it can be, it does happen. Uh, so here are a couple of resources that are very, very helpful. Uh, number one is howsecureismypassword.net. So this site, what it does is you enter in your password and it will test it and to give you by on a time scale, how long would it take the typical algorithm to hack that password, to figure out that password? Um, the second one is passwordgenerator.com, or .net, I'm sorry. Uh, this one is exactly what it sounds like. It generates uh, random passwords, and it has all kinds of features. You can control the size of your password. You can control whether or not it has special characters. Uh, so and it really helps with generating a nice, secure password. All right, so number three, this is the number one cause of compromised sites. Out-of-date plugins, WordPress core, and themes. It is absolutely essential to keep everything within your WordPress site up to date at all times. Failure to do so will result in you getting hacked at some point or another. Right, number four, user permissions. So I mentioned earlier how many times I've seen sites where everybody on the site is an admin <laughs> or there's you know five or six admins. Your site typically should have one to three admins. Uh, your host may be an admin, if, especially if you're in a managed host, then your host will typically have a, a uh, admin account. Uh, Pressable, for example, on every site, we are an admin. Uh, this allows, us to, allows your host to get in there and work on your site and help troubleshoot problems that occur. Uh, without you having to share your passwords with us every time on an insecure network connection. So uh, your pa you should limit admins to only those who absolutely need it. Number one, set your minimum user role to what that individual needs. Your average visitor who's just subscribing to your blog and wants to read your articles doesn't need to be an admin. They don't need to be an editor. They don't need to be an author. Make them a subscriber. Okay. Uh, there are also user role plugins that you can use to customize. So let's say you have a particular uh, editor, for example, who needs a certain set of privileges. Um, you can use user role editor type plugins to kind of fine tune that and give them exactly the permissions that they need. Uh, and that allows you to make sure that they're not having access that's not needed because even though that person may or may not be trusted. And, and there's two reasons, which brings me to two reasons actually why this is important. Number one is if you're working with a third party developer that you don't really know very, very well, you never know what they might do to your site if they have the wrong permissions, okay? You never know what kind of back door they may put into your site. 
and then later on you're out of luck if they screw your site up. Uh, the other reason is simply that they may get in there and be doing their job and make a mistake. Mistakes happen. People are human beings. We make mistakes. And that, may mis that mistake may completely destroy your website. Uh, I actually had a client one time who uh, had a user get in there and was doing their job and they deleted something that they should not have deleted and it deleted thousands of user accounts off of their website. And there was no way to back those up. There was no way to trace them or recover them. So they had to go, the client had to go in there and manually recreate every single one of them. Um, needless to say, it cost them a lot of time and money. So, <laughs> no, actually they did not. Um, it's a little hard to fire the owner or co-founder. <laughs> so, um, this one here is, is security plugins number five. I want to do a disclaimer on this before we go into it in depth. It is always better to manually secure your website at the code level if possible. However, most people, de even designers and developers, do not know how to do that. They don't know how to go in and write the code that is necessary to secure your site properly. So there's an alternative and that is security plugins. A uh, couple of good examples is iTheme Security, Word, WordFence, the WordFence guys are here today in fact. Um, these are just a couple of examples. There's many really great ones out there. Uh, Bulletproof is another good one. And it's a very easy way to secure a website. They come with a very wide range of features that allows you to do just about everything you need to make sure that your site is secure. However, you should use these plugins with caution. If you don't know what each feature does, don't enable it until you figure out what it does because it very well may break your website. Um, depending on, because every website is different, there's different configurations, there's different setups, different themes, different plugins in place. Maybe you have some custom code and you enable the wrong feature and you could literally lock yourself out of your website. Best case scenario. Worst case scenario, you completely break your site and now you've got to restore it if you're lucky enough to have a backup. So, okay. All right, so um, make sure that if you are going to use a plugin, make sure you research the features. I think security is a very good example of this. I see people all the time who have gone in there, they've installed the plugin and just started click, 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 enable everything. And then they come to me like, I can't get into my site or my site's gone or, oh, well, yeah, you didn't know what you were doing. So <laughs> read the documentation is, I guess is what I'm saying. Read the documentation before you enable something. And this should be kind of a standard practice with any kind of plugin, whether it be security or anything else. Because the same thing can happen with other types of plugins, obviously. So, all right. Uh, all right. So, like I said, you can keep in touch with me. Uh, my blog is wolfbishop.com. Feel free to email me at any time, timothy at pressable.com. And if anybody's got questions, I think we got a couple minutes. Yes. Um, we do not currently in our knowledge base. There are a couple of articles that are in the development phase right now that should be released hopefully fairly soon um, to do exactly that. Uh, right now there's not. But there, um, do a Google search how to man for manual secure, manually securing web WordPress uh, and you'll come up with a lot of really great articles. So, yes? Uh, when you're backing up your site using Backup Buddy, mm -hmm. Right. So when you first set it up, do a complete. Okay. okay. Once you're done, once you're uh, you've uh, got it already set up and configured, uh, then just do the data. The exception is well, the exception is when when you add a new plugin because data will back up any changes you make to your posts and pages. Okay. It won't data back up any backups or any changes you make to plugins or themes or anything like that. So if you make any plugin changes do a complete backup. Yes? Security is a plugin also, isn't it? Yeah. Security is, is primarily a security firewall plugin. Um, so it's, it doesn't have as many, it, it's, you should actually, this is, for most, for the most part, I tell people don't ever use more than one security plugin at a time. 
The exception is security. Uh, using that alongside of WordFence or iTheme security is very complimentary, and I do recommend that. So. You use WordFence and security? I hear. Yes, you can use WordFence and security. There are a couple of things. Number one is hiding your WP admin. Um, there was a point uh, when that was an absolutely great practice to do. Uh, now it, re it doesn't hurt anything, but it really doesn't help because the algorithms have gotten smart enough to be able to figure that out and find the new admin URL. Uh, the other big one is to uh, change your uh, WP database prefix still somewhat helpful, but it doesn't help to the degree that it, that it used to. Uh, because again, the hacking, the hacking scripts that people use have gotten to the point where it can figure that out. It can find it. All right, so. that's it. Let's get any more questions. Um, just see, find, find Wolf.